Namaste, Jaipur. I see so many known faces and it's wonderful to be here once again. Our speakers have already been introduced, so I'll not go into that. Thanks to the boon of internet and Google Meet, all of us had the pleasure of meeting before this session and actually um, getting an overview of what we want to do. We, we do not want this session to be academic, so we are not going to talk about character kya hota hai, setting kaise banta hai, and all of that. We have two very illustrious panelists with us, and we'll try to learn from their lives, and by the time we end this session, I'm sure all of us will have something to carry back from what the title of the session says, Landscapes of Fiction. So I'll just try and start by setting the context for this session, and then we'll get to uh, the conversation with the authors. Original hai, dhyan se suniyega, unpublished hai. The writer and his writing cannot be separated from each other, just as it is challenging to isolate the writer from society. Since time immemorial, writers have been the flag bearers of human imagination. In their search for answers to their eternal quest, they leave something for the community to learn, release, or carry forward. It comes in the form of verses that teach us to love and aspire, dramas that show us naivety and malice and the struggle for power, and stories born out of experiences or painted by figments of the imagination. Whatever the medium or genre may be, the interaction that a piece of writing evokes in society becomes the enigmatic dialogue between the writer and the world. It's an endless cycle. So long as there's curiosity in the human spirit, there will always be space for the writer to flirt with words. And the more a writer gets immersed into one's writing, the deeper grows the understanding and perspective of the world around. As a meandering river that flows across the sands of time, a novelist challenges the very fundamental beliefs on which one's perspectives are molded, leaving lasting impressions on the banks for us to look and reflect upon. A writer's life is the ultimate theme of one's collected works, though life's experiences are deeper interactions that do not happen in the pages of a book, but during the process of their penning down and are therefore not as vividly told as those tales that find the light of the day. The evolution of a writer is beyond control. Writing cannot be forced, which would make it seem false and contrived. It is instead painted on an open canvas, carefully outlined and then tailored with expert precision. It is a prayer, a meditation, and a deeper conversation where the writer becomes the liberated one. While being a part of the world around, a writer has to rise above and beyond to walk in the shoes of those around. One has to feel the pain, trauma, hurt, and sorrow, live the joy, the ecstasy, and become witness to the epic celebration that life is. The toil and labor that goes into training oneself as a writer are often the most solitary of affairs. The process is tedious, and when solitude begins to seem like loneliness, many give up and seek shorter goals. They undermine the potential of their creativity and put a full stop to their wild imagination long before it unleashes its true potential. But masters of the art have always carried on and lived countless lives in one span. We have these two wonderful writers who truly, truly signify what I just said at the end of it. The masters of art have always carried on and lived countless lives in one span. If I can begin with you, Madam Parumita, can you, can you tell us how did you begin writing? What was your first brush with the world of creativity? Was it the literary surround, uh, surrounding that you grew up in? How did the creative world attract you? What brought you near to it? Sakit, I must say that uh, I was a lucky one uh, I am a lucky one because I grew up, I was grown in a family of writers. My mother is a very important uh, poet of the country, Pratibha Satpathi, and my father was a literary critic, and writing some way has, uh, you know, grown on me. So, um, as a child, I remember the, uh, been inside our library, reading the books, 
and uh, loving the pages, though I don't, uh, I don't remember that I had understood those uh, properly. But um, you know, the smell of the books, the abundance of books around me, and the, uh, you know, the writers, important writers who coming to our house and then discussing it all through, and my mother being, you know, getting absent-minded once in a while and just, you know, shunning us and <laughs> getting inside a room and writing. All those things were euphoria for me, and I was very uh, inspired. I was very, um, I said, uh, mesmerized by that uh, thought. But somehow, it just happened that uh, I started writing, and uh, I, my first story was published in a very important journal of uh, our state, the Odisha. Uh, that was uh, in 1985. I was uh, I was doing graduation that time, and uh, some of the good writers said that it is good and you must do that. So after that, there was slowly I started picking up, and uh, you know, uh, now it has become a way of life. I must tell you that it is uh, kind of a life, which probably you will be asking me, and I'll be telling a little more about myself. So that is how writing has slowly come into me, like you know leaves coming to a tree and it was very natural probably because I has grown up in the family of the writers and I thought writing is the most important profession or passion of the world and writers are the most important people in the world. I still think so. Very well said ma'am. That early inspiration for a writer is very important. If I tell you my life, मैं दार्जिलिंग में एक बोर्डिंग स्कूल में पढ़ता था और शायद मैं लेखक इसलिए बना कि मेरी माँ मुझे चिट्ठियाँ लिखी करती थी एंड आई टू रिप्लाई टू हो एंड दैट वाज आई थिंक माय फर्स्ट ब्रश विथ पोइट्री और विथ लेटर राइटिंग और विथ एवरीथिंग एल्स एंड हाउ अबाउट यू मैडम उपाध्याय इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग इवन यू ग्रू अप इन अ वेरी लिटरेरी सराउंडिंग राइट येस दैट्स राइट साकेत फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन आई मस्ट से वॉट अ पोइटिक एंड प्रोफाउंड uh, introduction to writing, to writers, to the world that writers create and populate, you made. So kudos for that. And very, very happy that I got to hear that. Um, so to your question, uh, like Paramita ji, I have been blessed. My father was a professor of literature. I grew up in a house filled only with books. Books were my toys from as long, uh, as early as I can remember. But despite my father being professor of literature, it's my mother who introduced me to the habit of writing and reading. Um, she uh, encouraged me to read at a very early age. She encouraged me to write. Um, she actually believed that I could write. And I, I don't remember, but she uh, has fond memories of me sitting in an open balcony my five-year-old self, uh, I can't even picture her anymore, and stringing words together and rhyming, and my mother came upon me and said, oh, what are you doing alone here? It's very sunny, and she, I, apparently I replied, I'm making a poem. And for me, that was an important activity. It was an important achievement to string words together. And my mother never laughed at me. She never thought it was cute or funny. She always thought it was important. Um, I remember, um, I, I think it was her birthday, and I wanted to gift her something. So I asked her, what would you like to have? She said, why don't you write some poems for me? And that was the first time I, I literally, literally wrote one poem a day, because it was 11 days to her birthday, and I gave her those 11 poems. She still has them. I don't even, I might have been, what, 12 or 13? My mother is there, you guys can ask her. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it was really bad poetry. But she loved it. And that just encouraged me. And then there was a, a story writing competition. I was probably 15. And my mother said, no, you must participate. She took me there. I had not a single thought about a plot or anything. And she said, oh, you can do it. I wrote a story, um, this was a competition organized by Kadambini magazine. It was very prominent, literary, yeah, and some really good judges. Um, and I was just doing it because she told me so. I, I had no, I mean, I didn't even think I could write. That story 
won the prize, it was published in Kadambi. And those were the old days, now I'm going to betray my age here. Uh, those were the days before you all had internet and email accesses and social media. So I received a bag full of post postcards and arrow mail because they published my address with the story. And I'm sure many of them were just writing to me because this is like a young girl writing about experiences which she definitely has not had because I made up and I'm sure it was a very precocious and bad story. But I received so many letters and I, that was the first time I felt the reach of the written world. And then of course I loved writers, books, uh, my father's poetry, and then there was no looking back. Well said, ma'am. So we see we have a very common ground between two of our writers. They have both come from literary backgrounds. And despite all odds, they have carried on writing. I have written my first book last year, but I do not know whether 10 years down the line I'll be writing or no. But they have carried on this journey for a long, long time, right? But that first burst with the world of writing or creativity is not enough. How does a writer improve? How does a writer become better? How does he, you know, how does he work on his craft? For example, I was re recently talking to um, Sakat Majumdar, one of our finest novelists of South Asia, who has just written this uh, book called The Middle Finger, right? So he told me that, you know, writing cannot be taught like engineering. You can't take it from the hand and take it from the hand. You can't write it from the writing. So you have lived so long in your life, so much you have written, tell your own experience that how you have improved your craft, how you have improved your craft, how you have improved your craft. Let's start with you, Madam Parumita. As I had just shared with you, I started writing very early in life, when I was doing graduation, the first story was published, but I had started writing before that also. Uh, basically for my parents and my school, as Anu had said, uh, for school competitions and um, I mean early college competitions and all. So what happens, you know, uh, uh, there are certain experiences, there are certain things that happen to you or happen uh, to many people or comes, uh, come to your mind once in a while. Those get somehow stored in a kind of a space in you um, and uh, in solitude, you come and uh, keep, keep remembering those and then words come to you and you start writing. Yes, I have been writing for quite some time. I would not say that I am only inspired, I am also working on it. And why did I do it? I must tell you that I live two lives, one life for the world. I am a tax collector by profession, probably they had sent it, uh, so told it in the bio, I have uh, missed it. And you know, it's such a different uh, kind of a thing that I do for my living. So, but when I talk about my parallel life, the life that I do while uh, writing, why I'm saying this because I can see a lot of youngsters and they must be thinking of writing or uh, are into writing already. So how, how does it influence me, affect me in my life? It is like, you know, um, it has, um, made me think and look at certain things in a much more deeper and different way than it generally visible uh, to the world or to my naked eyes. I have probably tried uh, consciously, sincerely, sometime absent-mindedly, or in some time in my subconscious to look and see between those lines what could have happened, what is there, what is not being seen to the eyes. Probably that has uh, encouraged me to write on those characters, those events, those feelings, those experiences, and I kept on doing that. Sometimes uh, my recent novel, um, Abhi Preth Kal, that has been translated into Hindi also. Uh, this book is, uh, um, based on the last part of freedom struggle, um, basically in Odisha, but for the whole country. So, you know, this, there are certain happenings in my family, like my nani and nana were the first uh, widow remarried couple that time. My uh, nana was a uh, 
uh, freedom fighter, a doctor and a freedom fighter, and my nani was married at seven and became a widow at nine. Her father, who is a hero, uh, that time, you know, had uh, fought against all the odds to make it happen that the daughter will stay and marry again. So those things, things I, what I wanted to tell you that the things get stored in somewhere and they come out and you try to rehearse because I live that kind of a life, the life of imagination and reality, which is always um, kind of a um, different life, two parallel lives that I live, I told you. And uh, you know, in this other life, I always um, get to live many lives, many kind of characters, many kind of events. They are enticing, interesting, exciting, and sometimes painful also, very, very painful because you have to be inside those for a very, very long time. You get transformed to that. Kaya Pravesh is ko bolte hai, is type ki bhi hoti hai. So um, as I told you that I have been writing for a long time and it has been a, now it has become a habit of uh, doing that. It's a way of life. Probably um, I can live with, without anything else, <laughs> but without writing or reading, probably I cannot live. It has come to that. And um, there is no time for me to explain my feelings before writing each and every um, book. But I must tell you that for every book, I try to uh, put a vision, put my conviction, and which it's very interesting note to note that it changes with uh, time. Uh, probably what I was writing when I was in I was th in my 30s, and at this moment probably I'm writing something else. Maybe my mother says, who is uh, still now the first uh, reader of my books, uh, my work, she says probably it could be that at that point of time they were ridden by uh, excitement, so the feelings, very strong feelings, but uh, now maybe uh, it has been smoothed a little by reasonableness, <laughs> which comes with uh, understanding life and uh, experiences. But uh, yes, there has been a conscious effort also, and um, to uh, put the things, the convictions I have um, to, into words, if you give me one more minute, I'll tell you, at the moment I'm writing about, uh, um, you know, a kind of a dichotomy and similarity between the um, mythological women characters and a modern uh, woman at that situation, put in that situation. So they, I have been writing a series on that and plan to make a book out of that. So certain things are, have come to me which I thought that I must express and must let my readers know. And uh, those are my thoughts basically and experiences which I wanted to say. Thank you. Two things. Um, <laughs> Madam Parumita is being very humble when she says that, you know, I'm not that accomplished as I'm making her out to be. But she's already a recipient of the Sahitya Academy Award. She has more recently won the Sarla Devi Puraskar, if I'm not wrong. और आप बता रहे थे कि आपने अपने किताब में आ, अपने नानी की आंखों से फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल के बारे में बताया है, राइट? सो आई हैव रेड रिटन अ वर्क ऑफ क्रिएटिव नॉन फिक्शन। इट्स नॉट फिक्शन, इट्स क्रिएटिव नॉन फिक्शन। सो इवन आई वाज हैविंग दैट स्ट्रगल कि ये फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल हैज बीन टोल्ड टू मेनी टाइम्स। इसको कैसे बताएं कि लोगों को बेहतर समझ में आए? सो इन माय बुक इट इज टोल्ड थ्रू द आईज ऑफ प्रोफेसर रोमिला थापर। so I'm in conversation with, with Professor Thapar and she is recalling the freedom struggle, how she saw it from eyes. Aappe aate hai, Madam Upadhyay, and we are already halfway through the session. Aapne apne hunar ko kaise tarasa, how did you become a better novelist and how did you go about doing this craft? Um, it's very generous of you to imply that I'm a better novelist, I'm not. I'm an apprentice. I consider myself an apprentice writer and I'm not saying this because I'm being humble. I'm saying it because that's the truth. I started writing fiction pretty late in life. Um, I think 2016 is when I started writing uh, prose, short stories, novels. I just got very lucky that Harper Collins published my English works and uh, Raj Palan Sons published my, I write bilingually, so my Hindi works. Um, I come like, um, Paramitaji, I come from a different world. I'm a trained lawyer. I used to work for uh, investment banks <laughs> for a very long time. Uh, 
for global investment banks and lived in a different world. Writing just was something that I felt was a seed sown in me that just kept germinating and germinating. You know how you saw a seed, you don't know when it's going to come into bloom. I don't think it has yet come into bloom, but at least it has germinated. There were life events which caused the upheaval. But I think what really has caused me to write are two things. One, because I really want to write. You have to want to do it without fear, without expectation of any favor, without even being expected to be read. I, every time people now with social media, everybody can access everybody, uh, which is great. Every time readers reach out to me to say, I read your novel, Bhauri, and it touched me. I read Dora, and it connected me back to my Rajasthani roots. Or I read Kintsugi, and it showed me how you can, me you can mend the ruptures and be a whole person again. I am filled with astonishment and gratitude because I did not expect anybody to read my work. And, you know, so, so one is a true, indomitable wish to write. The second is support. I think, and I'm sure it's true for Paramita Ji too, especially for women authors. I'm sorry, but I'm going to make it a little bit gendered here. For women authors, we lead so many lives. There is a professional life. For 22 years, I was, I worked full time for an investment bank. Investment banks are eaters of time and energy. They compensate you well for that, but that's what they do. And um, you know, we have family, children, other worldly engagements that we cannot shed. I I'm not saying male authors can shed them. I'm saying for us, there is no option. You have to firmly live and inhabit and manage the various worlds as a woman. I could never have done it without the support of my husband. And uh, this is, you know, it might come across as ruining my feminist credentials, but I'm grateful to him. Without his unconditional support and also, you know, a lot of pride in what I do, uh, he, uh, I, I have been able to persevere. The third thing, which, uh, sorry, I only said two, my, despite being a banker, my math is seriously weak. The third thing is you find the right person at the right time to read your work and say whether it works or it doesn't. My father said to me, my father Hindi, he said to me, my Jaldi karna chaho, aise nahi ho sakta. Cheeze pakengi. Wo jo bolte hai rasri avat jatte sil par parat nisan. Jo rasa hai, wo aata jata rehta hai, patthar pe bhi nishan par jata hai. To wo prakriya ko tum usko fast forward nahi kar sakte. Cheezon ko pakne do. Jab wo pak jayengi, to wo phootengi. Jab wo phootengi, to wo phalengi. Jab wo phalengi, to unki khushbu phalengi. Oh, is baat ko ye mere pita ke liye taaliyan hain un tak pahunche awaaz ve ab is duniya mein nahi hain unka prabhav jo mere jeevan par raha jaise suryamukhi phool aur suraj hota hai suryamukhi phool wo apni ichha se bhi nahi rok sakta khud ko wo suraj ki taraf mudega hi to mere jeevan mein bahut purushon ka yogdan raha hai और मैं उनके प्रति बहुत ग्रेटफुल हूं और स्त्रियों का मैंने पता नहीं तुम्हारे प्रश्न का उत्तर दिया कि नहीं साकेत बहुत सारी बातें कह दी केस आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ दोस आर वैलिड पॉइंट्स बिकॉज़ एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वी ऑल वांट टू टेक समथिंग बैक फ्रॉम दिस सेशन एंड नॉट गो यू नो जस्ट विद द एकेडमिक डिस्कोर्स दैट हैपेंस ऑल द टाइम एंड यू रेज सम वेरी वैलिड पॉइंट्स मैडम परोमिता इफ आई कैन इवन आस्क यू दैट बिल्डिंग अपॉन व्हाट मैडम उपाध्याय सेड राइटर्स आर सॉलिटरी क्रिएचर्स very humble of you again to say that, you know, I'm an apprentice writer. A writer is always learning. He's, he or she is never satisfied. 
राइट सो इन दैट सेंस दे आर वेरी सॉलिटरी क्रिएचर्स और इन्होंने जैसे बताया तो उस हिसाब से मुझे आप ये बताइए कि सो मेनी पीपल सिटिंग हेयर नॉट एवरीबडी विल बी अ राइटर बट मेनी ऑफ देम माइट हैव पीपल इन दे फैमिली और फ्रेंड सर्कल हु आर राइटर्स और हु आर बर्डिंग राइटर्स एंड देन सेकेंड पॉइंट आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग टू यू इज मैडम उपाध्याय ब्रॉ द डिफरेंस ऑफ यू नो मेल राइटर्स एंड फीमेल राइटर्स आई वुड राधो टेक इट ऑन अ डिफरेंट लेवल एंड से द फिक्स एंड राइटर्स एंड नॉन फिक्स एंड राइटर्स और उभरते हुए लेखक और स्टैब्लिश्ड राइटर्स है ना तो हमें आप अपने करियर से अपने एक्सपीरियंस से ये बताइए कि जो लोग अपने इमीडिएट सर्कल में राइटर्स को देखते हैं हाउ कैन दे बी अ पिलर ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ टू देम बिकॉज राइटर्स आर वेरी सॉलिटरी दे आर नेवर सेटिस्फाइड वो डिसअपॉइंट होते हैं खुद के लेखन से वो बार बार पन्ने को फाड़ के डस्टबिन में फेंकते हैं ड्राफ्ट आफ्टर ड्राफ्ट द प्रोसेस इज वेरी टीडियस राइट सो मेनी अ टाइम्स एज ए सेट इन माई ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स दैट द प्रोसेस इज लॉन्ग एंड मेनी टाइम्स दे गिव अप एंड पुट अ फुल स्टॉप टू द वाइल्ड इमेजिनेशन लॉन्ग बिफोर इट अनलिस इज इट्स ट्रू पोटेंशियल सो वॉट कैन पीपल डू टू कीप द फायर टू कीप द फ्लेम अ लाइव इन द राइटर्स वेल Uh, so very difficult question saket probably i have not got the answer till now and been looking for it all through my life uh uh writing you know uh, has become um, such a part of me uh, i cannot say that i can live without it but for uh, as um, taking cue from anukriti my mother as i told you she is a very important writer she tell, told me uh, when i was very young i was going to um uh, joint civil services then um, you know my got married had a child my daughter then uh, she told me i was saying that why should i write what do i get out of it then she told me uh, look daughter i have written a poem also on her that that ma ma beti ke baat chit so she told me look uh, beti uh, ye hai ki you know many things will come and go in your walk of life and many things you will lose but writing is such kind of a passion which will keep being with you all through your life and work with you as a very very trusted and uh, faithful friend all through your life so probably i keep remembering this i am getting good storms when i tell that also and i remember her or whenever i have an occasion to speak to all all of you so i think youngsters can understand this in a better way you know writing would be for you like a world where you are alice and you go go to a wonderland or you know you are harry potter and just cross the mirror and go to some somewhere uh, some other land probably at this walk of life you may not think of that but after some time maybe 10 and 15 years hence when life is become very complicated complex you know throwing in every direction then you will understand that i have some corner where i am there for myself only and yes Well, how do i relate to you how as a writer i relate to you no i do my work mera sadhana ho writing jo ho in a very solitary manner in a room inside uh, with a table uh, desk and like, you know table lamp i am not like an actor the actor you know for art, art they come out and you uh, follow them i mean we follow them madly but for a writer what he writes or she writes it goes out it goes out and you have have the you are the person who interpret in you know multifarious ways it's not that what i have written you will understand it that way you will understand it that way he will understand in a different way so every body has some thing to take out of it so i would not say anything to be uh, there to be disappointed and you know writing will teach you patience and teach you that you are an apprentice or apprentice or you are learning all through your uh, the, um, life and it will give a kind of a feeling to accept things as it is that is what uh, i have been my experience can i just add that so what you were saying is so true everything rung true i call it secretly i this is the first time i'm sharing i feel writers are shy exhibitionists sharmile dikhavti log hain apne mein ghuse rahenge लेकिन वो आपसे बातचीत करना चाहते आपको बताना चाहते हैं उनके भीतर क्या घट रहा है लेकिन बड़े शर्मीले हैं कहाँ नहीं जाता संकोच हो जाते हैं और स्त्रियों के लिए तो दूसरे सरोकार भी हैं जस्ट वांटेड आई हैव सो मेनी क्वेश्चंस टू आस्क 
Parumita, would you like to start? Give us a very brief reading. We just have six minutes before we o open the floor to the audience. Let's keep it very brief. Yeah. Saket has told, you know, uh, though we are shy and not an exhibit business, we sometimes feel very, you know, very urged to read, read out to you because that is how we reach you. We have nothing otherwise. We are not like, you know, charismatic or celebrities like actors and all. Anyway, this book, A Boundless Moment, this is the uh, Academy Award winning book. And uh, this has got an array of uh, stories on the different experiences of women. I am reading uh, a part of the story, uh, Alone Together. This is uh, about two um, uh, women friends, uh, two girls, when uh, they were just uh, completed uh, their school, they have one, found, uh, one of them found that she has got leukodama. So how life has changed for both of them? How the girl with the leukodama became a woman and uh, lived her life, and how the other woman has uh, lived her life. So since time is not there, much there, so I'll just read for uh, one minute. OK. So towards the, you know, the, um, Aparahan, jo bolte hai, life ke, maybe up after 60 years of age, both of them are meeting. Uh, she has uh, been a professor and retired and uh, is uh, living at somewhere in place. Uh, uh, this is Veena and uh, Maya. Maya is the girl with the lycodoma. Veena sat sil silently watching Maya sipping the golden brown liquid. After a long time she spoke, her voice was almost inaudible. These days we are living like two strangers. Maya cast a questioning glance at Veena. We no longer live as husband and wife. We hardly spoke to each other in the last two years. Most of the communications are made either through the servants or signs. Veena took a pause and went on. I didn't tell you when we had met last, maybe a decade or so ago. He always returned home late. All these things, she narrated the frustrations of our life, the Veena, the, you know, the correct woman, and the uh, girl with lycodoma, woman with lycodoma. Maya did not accept this. I'm just skipping it. Maya did not accept this because I must, I must listen to you because uh, you are you're much younger to me. Uh, she wondered what she could say to console Veena longing and pining for something, to part from a dear one, or to lose something you value a lot, to cast aside memories you cherished with care. Aren't these the most important truths of life? Veena muttered, as if speaking to herself, her face half turned towards Maya. There are other equally important truths uh, too, to make a fresh start, to salvage your dreams from the ruins, to explore new possibilities instead of brooding over what is lost, Maya explained. Both women stood at the balcony, resting their hands on its rail, gazing at the distant jungle. The fading light of the departing day swept over their elderly bodies, revealing to them the secret corner of their own minds, now shaped to maturity after being cast into the mold of their separate individual experiences. The soft, cool breeze that rustled past them stirred the curiosity and sense of regret of leaving a path of life untrodden that was familiar to one and an enigma to the other. Okay, so I should end here. So Thank I'll you. Without anything. Yeah. yeah. So um, that was riveting. मैं अपनी हिंदी किताब में से पढ़ी हूँ नीना आंटी इसके बारे में ज़्यादा बात नहीं लेकिन परमिता जी की कहानी की तरह दोस्त रियों का संवाद है एक बड़ी उम्र की और एक युवा so Deepa ne apni anguliyon ki or dekha. Haath aapas mein ragarne ke baujood unki salvatein vaisi ki vaisi thi. Nina aunty, aapko yaad hai ek baar mein chhat par ro rahi thi. Bangle mein kisi ki shadi thi. Aapne mujhe Shakespeare padh kar sunaya tha. Nina aunty ne so Deepa ki or aankhye vithai. Godhuli ki dhumil kaasni rang ki chyote mein unki saadi ka rang gehera ho gaya tha. Or chahere par chhaya utar aai thi. तुम्हें याद है उन्होंने कहा हाँ सुदीपा ने गर्दन निलाई लेकिन मम्मी कहती हैं ऐसा कभी नहीं हुआ और मुझे इतना विविडली याद है सब कुछ आपकी ड्रेस का रंग भी मधु चीची के कहने से क्या तुम्हें याद है तो तुम्हारे लिए हुआ नीना आंटी ने कहा लेकिन क्या आपको याद है क्या सचमुच हुआ था या फिर कोई और मुझे याद होने न होने से क्या फर्क पड़ता है सुदीपा किसी एक के भूल जाने या नकारने से तुम्हारी याद तुम्हारे अनुभव झूठे नहीं पड़ जाते 
अक्सर हमारी स्मृतियाँ एक दूसरे से मेल नहीं खाती जो जैसा तुम्हें याद है वह वैसा ही दूसरों को कभी नहीं होगा लो एक टोकरी तुम उठाओ उन्होंने बांस की टोकरी सुदीपा को थमाई वहाँ बरामदे में फूल सुखाएंगे यहाँ इतनी ओस गिरती है बाहर छोड़ा तो सब सड़ जाएंगे बंगले में मेरा एक ही अड्डा था उन्होंने कहा छत और शादियाँ तो वहाँ दर्जनों हुई डैडी को भीड़ इकट्ठा कर शादियाँ करवाने का बड़ा शौक था वह शौक तो फैमिली में सबको है सुदीपा ने कहा नीना आंटी ने बरामदे के कोने में रखे तख्त पर टोकरी की पंखुड़ियाँ एक छोर से दूसरे छोर तक बरसा दी हाँ हाँ सो तो है उन्होंने कहा उनका स्वर हल्का फुल्का था तुमने वह किस्सा सुना है जब दूल्हा शादी करने टट्टू पर बैठ कर आया था बेडली हैव अ मिनट इन आवर हैंड बट एक चीज और मैं जो समझना चाहता था वो था हाउ फिक्शन नॉवलिस्ट के लिए ऐसा क्या एक्सपीरियंस होता है जब उसका राइटिंग गेट्स लॉस्ट इन ट्रांसलेशन और हम ये स्टैब्लिश इसलिए कर सकते हैं क्योंकि मैडम उपाध्याय खुद से हिंदी और अंग्रेजी में लिखती हैं और मैडम पारूमिता आपकी राइटिंग हैज़ बिन ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू अदर लैंग्वेज राइट सो हैव यू एवर बीन इन अ पोजीशन वेयर यू फेल दैट समथिंग वाज लॉस्ट इनटू ट्रांसलेशन वेल यू नो द फ्यू ऑफ द नुआंसेस वुड बी लॉस्ट बट आई इन माय यू नो लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टाइम ऑफ राइटिंग आई गेस दैट एज एज अ यंग वुमन आई वाज वेरी वरिड कि ये कम हो जा रहा है क्या ठीक नहीं आ पा रहा है बट दैट्स द ओनली वे वी कैन रीच टू द people in india you know unless my work is being translated or a, a work of a malayali writer being translated into english or hindi probably we can't reach you so agar thoda sa bhi lose kaha ho jata hai lost ho jata hai in translation still i think we can ignore it and but you know i'm what i have marked that from uh, translation from indian language to indian language like you know from odia to hindi malayalam to hindi or to bengali to hindi has been th those nuances are kept to mostly kept basically to 99% they can be kept also that has been my experience because uh, i would say that i'm happy with the translation uh, translated books that i have theek hai and madam upadhyay kya aapko kabhi aisa laga ki maine angrezi mein kuch likha hai ab ise main khud ise hindi mein likh rahi hu to isme thoda chhedkhani karu phir badal karu wo to aapne zarur kiya hai bilkul aapne mujhe pakad liya saket bilkul स्त्रियाँ वैसे भी उठाई धरी का काम करती हैं घर में यहाँ से हटा के उधर रखा वहाँ से रही अच्छा नहीं दिख रहा वहाँ टांग दो दो भाषाएं मेरे लिए वो स्त्रीपन जीना भी आई ऑफ्टन मूव ट्रांजेक्शन इन द राइटिंग प्रोसेस फ्रॉम वन लैंग्वेज टू अन आदर एंड नथिंग इज लॉस्ट एक्चुअली आई फील अ लॉट इज गेन्ड एटलीस्ट फॉर ओरिजिनल राइटिंग आई कैन से आई फील एवरी टाइम आई स्विच फ्रॉम वन लैंग्वेज टू अन आदर देर इज अ डीपर लेर देर इज मोर there's more enrichment somehow i understand things better uh, english gives me the distance and hindi gives me that closeness yes so aap samajhte hain aap bhashiya bhashiya writer theek hai ab hum floor open kar rahe hain question and answers ke liye we have the first hand here second hand here and third hand here let's start the first hand here with the spectacles please so much for the wonderful session my question is simple a lot of people just read books and other stuff for increasing their knowledge you as writers what is your strategy for introducing someone to reading for pleasure especially fiction so i would love to hear more three of you yes well i the reason i'm answering it is because i have a 19 year old son and um, I did not introduce him to writing. In fact, he has introduced me to many different kinds. He's a football freak, so I read football books now. I'm not lying. I read football books. I know zero about sport. There's not a sporting bone in my body. Um, what encourages you to enjoy something? Well, actually, nothing. You cannot force another person or encourage them. All you can do is introduce them. Introduce them to your own joy. introduce them to the instruments of those joy right reading is a multi dimensional activity when you watch something on the screen i'm in no way denigrating the visual medium it has immense reach immense power where words do not reach you can see things you know but that is its limitation too it's all there there is very little room for interpretation when you read that's when you engage you go deeper you explore your own feelings your own reactions it teaches you 
immense compassion to. I have felt, you know, like you were saying, Paramita ji, you've started looking at things differently. I find this oasis of calm, sorry, I know, sorry, Saket. We talk too much. We get so little occasion to talk. You go ahead now. Uh, so we'll take the next question. We want more questions. The man invites. Hello, Namaskar. Uh, I'm an author and journalist from Odisha. My question to both the authors, both the ladies. Uh, she's, a, she's from management and law background. She's an uh, income tax commissioner. My question is, have you ever tried to put your professional experience into your writing? Uh, you know, experience is from the world. Profession is a very little part of it. Experience uh, from life, from world. And if I take experience being a woman, uh, if I take experience being a mother, uh, if I take experience being a, you know, bahu somewhere, uh, of a friend, and experience of other, you know, the women in uh, mythology, though I haven't experienced them, but I experienced them through my mind. So how can I not um, write about experiences? I, I mean, draw something from the experiences from my profession. Yes, uh, some experiences, profession also has given me some kind of a, um, you know, opening, I must tell you, to think in a different way, to uh, mix with the world, see the different uh, of the world. We writers are very greedy. We, we love to have experiences all the time from everywhere. You know, experiences which we, through our own persona, and the experience of others through our own mind. So, profession has to be a part of it. Next question, can we have question from... Can I just uh, add one yeah. thing? I, I agree, very briefly. I agree experiences do inside writing, but the similarity, at least from my own writing experience, between the experience and the writing is like acorn and the oak. If you look at the beach, you will know what the tree is. If you look at the tree, it will just be in front of me, between experience and writing. Can we take some questions from back? Please, the lady there uh, in white with the spectacles there. Yeah. and uh, thank you for this very enriching and useful session for those who are, those who are li really listening. My question is uh, to all three panelists as a writer. So when we start our journey as a young writer, we are more into passion, like Paramita Ma'am said. Uh, we're writing intensely and uh, it is more plot oriented. Over the time we go into character, not a person as a character, but maybe entire setup as a character. And uh, I would say it is, um, on top of all these vertical um, genres like uh, romance, thriller, action, on the top of it, it's all literally fiction because you are entirely beyond the story. As a writer, where do you see yourself and uh, what do you prefer, I would say? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it will just come to you, as I said, you know, um, uh, like flowers to a tree or uh, leaves to the tree. And don't worry for the passion. Be very, very passionate about it and keep writing whatever you feel like. More hands, please. Again, the lady from behind there, right, right next to you. Yeah. We'll come front. By profession, I am doctor and professor head in pharmacology department, medical college. So, question nahi, question nahi, bas chala ki tarah se hamare vicharon mein samanta hai, jaisa aap anubhav karte hain, wahi ki wahi. Maine utna nahi likha hai aap logon ki tarah profession ki par isse mujhe bhi aisa lag raha hai ki likha ja sakta hai agar hume apna retirement do aur pura devotion uspe lagaun. To meri do kitabe hain waise fiction ki. Zindagi jawan hai abhi bahut. Hi, so I'm a software developer and, and, and an author. And my question is ki, uh, how much, like, is the idea or the thought important or the hold on language when you're writing? Because I'm also writing a fiction. So, मतलब 
uh, it's is it that i need to be very strong in english or or uh, my imagination is enough <laughs> ये दिस इज लाइक चिकन एंड एग क्वेश्चन और एक्चुअली दैट्स रॉन्ग एनॉलॉजी बट वॉट इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट इज इट विच वन ऑफ योर सेंसेज इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट यू के नॉट आंसर दैट यू के नॉट पुट अ ग्रेडेशन आई थिंक थिंग्स विल कम टूगेदर यू इट्स माई फेवरेट का प्लेटफ्रॉम गालिब आई कीप कोटिंग इट आते हैं गैब से ये मजामी ख्याल में गालिब शरीर खामा नवाए सरोश दीज all everything that you write about comes from somewhere else it processes in you you'll find the language all the best to you right in front the lady here the last question uh thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, let me ask something uh, my name is kriti and i'm uh, an english major student so my question is that is it possible for a writer to write without the autobiographical elements coming in just in 30 seconds madam faru of course of course you can write on anything as i told you i'm writing on a uh, women in mythology and but you know i am there everywhere if uh, autobiography by that if you been that that is autobiographical then i have no excuse you are there everywhere in all the characters be it a male be it a female be it a old man be it a free or whatever a part of me is there i am writing myself my convictions my ideas and autobiography autobiography is there everywhere and you live so many lives it's this interest thank you we have run short of time thank you to the founders and producers of jaipur literature festival for having us here hame established writers ko celebrate karta karte rehna chahiye aur ubharte sitaron ko dabana nahi chahiye ubharte lekhakon ka madad kijiye unhe dabane se unhe aapka kuch nahi milta hai unhe samman dene se aapki pratishtha aur badhti hai and we should all keep celebrating the established writers and encouraging the young ones thank you very much for having us here